All right. Good morning, everybody. I, um, this is Dee. I'm doing the technical assistance today. I would like to cover just a couple of things from our last technical assistance session. So I'm going to give you just a second to uh, fill out the poll question there uh, to see if there's any areas that we need to uh, cover. And then I'm going to start sharing my screen. So once I share my screen, I have to cover up that poll. <clears throat> All right, and while we're waiting for that to happen, one of the uh, questions that had come up over the course of the time from our last uh, technical assistance webinar was, uh, an issue with drug testing, that um, the results were not going into the appropriate place. And that um, issue has been resolved and should uh, appear to have the exact date that you enter for the, um, for the drug test. So that should be resolved at this point in time. Uh, if not already, it will be later today. Uh, Dave Gallagher, yes, I do need you to call in to the number that's at the top of the screen so that I can allow you to uh, speak about the issue that you're going to be talking about. All right, so uh, we're going to move this poll over to the side. And... Um, and we'll bring it back when we need to do that. All right, so I'm going to share my screen here so that I can show you a couple of things that, that, um, that happened so that we can. Uh, and David, if you can mute your phone um, until it's time for you to talk, that would be great. So first thing that we had last time uh, with the with the um, session, we had a question from the audience about inactive participants remaining in Illinois WorkNet even after they are exited from IWDS. And yes, they do uh, stay on the Adam eligibility screen, but nothing happens beyond that exit. There's no notifications. Uh, they don't count in any of the tallies. Uh, they, you still will be able to see them from the, the enrolled customer listing. However, they will not ever be considered off track, and they will no longer receive emails. Your staff will no longer receive emails about them. And also, their IWDS enrollment status will be Exeter, and you will be able to see the exit date and the status. Uh, so they continue to remain in the tallies. Uh, on the training plan dashboard, but they also will appear below the dashboard under the Exeter area so that you, don't, you can avoid removing an exited person from, say, the service dates not met column. You can remove the dates or mark service complete as necessary. <coughs> Excuse me. The reason that they remain in the list um, is because, for example, if they completed an MSC cert certification, then um, they'll still be in those tallies. So let's take a look at this. And, and it's from the dashboard. We go to the training plan. Training plan. OK, this is taking a little bit of time today. Maybe it's because of all that rain that's been happening everywhere. Um, at the bottom of the screen where it has, uh, you see the Atom plan dashboard and the numbers here, you, at the bottom of the screen you will see Atom exiters, and you'll have reasons why they exited. Uh, unfortunately, right now, this, this particular uh, link is not working, so we're going to use the link above it. Now, that's th I'm in the uh, edit. It, I'm in the practice session here, so, so this is not what is, <coughs> what is live out on the system. If you look at a person's, we're going to look at 
Lacey's uh, profile. So as we look at Lacey's profile from the list of the exited people, you will notice here that the enrollment date, uh, enrollment status for IWDS is Exeter, that the exit date is listed, and the exit status says entered non-training. So then you will be able to see that they have exited and when they actually exited. But if we go back to the dashboard, if this person had completed the safety MSSC, they would still remain in this tally, but they will not show up in the numbers of on-track or off-track numbers. So that answers that question. So then what we want to do is we want to talk about the next question that we had. And <clears throat> that question was from Mike, and it said, if, if someone is not selected for the treatment group, what should happen with them in WorkNet? And so the results of that is the, after the testing, the information is entered into the SPR system, who then assigns the person. And within WorkNet, the information is loaded from SPR. So to find out who those people are, you go to your dashboard again, and you go to the Reports tab. Once you're in the Reports tab, you click on the link for Adam Eligibility, or yes, the Adam Eligibility Report. And it's thinking. And then you click on the eligibility. Get the drop-down arrow there. You scroll down, down to the group assignment. You pick control. And then you click view. So this shows the people that are loaded from SPR and what they what their status is. And the control group of individuals are also available from uh, random post random assignment, which we'll go to that one next. But as we look at the profile from uh, Smoky Maston, we'll see that their target occupation is not set, and their assignment is control. Their SPR study ID is number 15. So that's how you can find out if your um, person is in the control group or not. The other thing that you can do is go back to reports and then click the post random assignment report. And all of this list says what the people are, either treatment, control, veteran, whatever they are. But you cannot select their profile from here. So just to review what we just talked about, once you enter people into the SPR random assignment system, that system will communicate with the Atom tools worknet and provide the group assignment status, whether they're treatment or control. Then the Atom tools will mark the participant accordingly. The treatment people will become enrolled and will have a personal training and employment plan started. The control people will not display in the intake or the enrolled list of customers. They are only available through the reports tab. And both the post-random assignment report and, the, and from the eligibility report, you can access their profile only from the eligibility report. So overall, the status is to control, and then they drop off the customer listing and are only available through the reporting tab. Dee, so, this is Jim. Could you let me interject something for one moment, please? Sure thing. Sure thing. Yes. And also, once you know they're in the treatment group, remember, that's where you have to go into IWDS, IWDS under list random assignment, and that's where to go in and pick those clients. Whoever is the case manager must pick whoever's on the treatment group or been assigned to the veterans group before they can move forward in IWDS. That's all I got. All right. So um, does, 
does that answer those questions for the two folks and anybody else in the audience? If you want to raise your hand and let me know if that answers any, clears up anything for you, um, we can do that. Great. All right. All right. So now let's let's move on to the next topic, and I'm going to let uh, David Gallagher talk. And David, if you need me to drive anywhere on the screen, just let me know if we need to uh, change anything for you or show demonstrate anything for you. So if you um, want to unmute your phone and say good morning and start talking. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can everybody else hear? OK. Um, I'll be brief. Dee, I don't, I don't really need you to, to find anything on the screen for me. Um, I just want to um, specifically mention to the project managers who are on the, uh, the webinar and others who have been working with them on outreach plans and outreach plan updates uh, over the course of the last few months, um, just to remind you that um, Mike had asked for a, a, an update on those outreach plans um, for those uh, regional projects that have not met their enrollment goals. One has, has essentially met them at this point, and they know who they are. <laughs> um, and that's great. Uh, but for the rest of you, um, we were looking by this Friday for um, an update to the outreach plans that you previously developed um, with any new activities, any updated timelines, anything of that nature. Um, but then also, as an addendum, um, Mike had mentioned in his email from last Friday that um, we're also looking for a little bit more information of a strategic nature regarding outreach. Um, regarding, um, first of all, identifying and quantifying what you still need to do to meet your enrollment goals, um, determine how close you are and, and how many applicants you need to, to meet those enrollment goals, um, and then a bit more strategically, how are you going to go about in the next few months finding those applicants in order to meet those, those goals? So who are the types of individuals you want to target? Um, how do you see the best ways to reach them? What are those, how do those best ways to reach them tie back to the outreach activities that you identified in your plan? And what other resources are you going to need to, to make that happen, um, if any? Um, and, and specifically, what sort of assistance and resources could you use from state or local partners in order to make that happen? And then finally, kind of what are your monthly time frames and milestones to reach those enrollment goals? I think we're, we're getting to the point where we really, really need to specify, um, you know, what still needs to be done, what's a realistic time frame for getting it done, and what are the interim milestones to make sure that that happens? So, um, Again, nothing more specific than that. Just wanted to, to redraw your attention to, to Mike's email from last Friday and the need to to uh, send in those updated uh, outreach plans by this Friday. So that's about that's all I have, Dean. Um, I don't know if there are any. Didn't notice any questions pop up. If there are any, um, I'm going to be on the call till it's done and. Uh, or if you want to send me an email question uh, or anything of that nature, that's fine. Great. Thank you, David. That's wonderful. And if you have any specific questions, you can type them into the chat pod. Uh, let's take a look at our list that we have. Um, do, you, um, do you have a specific question about enrolled customers for IWDS? If you do, Please type that into the chat pod if you have specific questions about these particular areas that are showing on the screen right now. Um, please type those into the chat pod and we will address any of those that we can. While we're waiting for you to do that, 
we're going to talk a little bit here about uh, an item that Mike Baker was going to bring up, but he's at a doctor's appointment. So uh, will participate? Will participants continue to appear in the Atom system after they quit or are otherwise exited into IWDS? Now that pretty much is what we just showed you earlier on the call today. But here is the FAQ answer that will be up on the system. Yes, they will continue to appear, to appear in Illinois WorkNet because they were assigned to the treatment group and we need to track how much progress they made in completing their training plan. You will still be able to see them from the enrolled customer listing. When a client is exited from the program in IWDS before completing their entire training plan, case managers must edit the training plan in IWD, IWN, Illinois WorkNet, to remove all activities not started and edit the end date of any incomplete activities to the date the person quit or was removed from the activity. So we looked at that in the last technical assistance where we removed some of the dates and we removed the items. Any specific service started within IWDS but not finished should be marked as unsuccessful completion in IWDS. By deleting future planned activities within I Illinois WorkNet that are now moot, clients will no longer show up in the dashboard counts for those activities and will not be considered off track. Neither the clients nor Adam's staff will receive any system-generated emails after the date that the customer is exited. You will be able to see the exit date, the IWDS enrollment status will be Exeter, and they will appear in the Adam Exeter section at the bottom of the Adam Training Plan Dashboard. All right, so I think that now um, hopefully we'll solve our issue on that. This will be posted in the FAQ section. And if you have any further questions about that, please let us know. All right, so we do have a question uh, from the audience. It says, I have a client taking MSSC online through, I'm thinking that's Illinois Valley Community College but that is not one of my provider choices in IWDS. They will test at ICC, which is on the list. Should I choose ICC or get IWDCC added? Um, Dee, that's, a, a, that's an IWDS services question he's asking about there. Okay. So David, in that, all it have to take is your uh, systems administrator to set up the relationship to add IVCC. So whichever you guys would want. My big thing, if I was you, would be where's the credential going to come from? Is it going to come from ICC or IVC? To me, you'd want the service to match up with your credential. Does that make sense? And we'll wait for David to type his answer. I think the well, yes, the credential finally finally does come from S MSSC because that's where the certificate comes from. So, what have what have they been doing, Jim? What have they been doing with? Well, again, that? it's a relationship issue. Anyway. What happens is we pick a service provider. It's based on how their their systems administrator has set it up. So all it'd have to be is Dina. Uh, I think that's the systems administrator at LWS 16 would just add IVCC, um, and then he'd have that available to be picked. I can speak with Dina and you, David, offline uh, to make sure of, of what you guys want, what would make it look the best uh, and be most appropriate. Does that sound good, David? All right, great. All right, so now the next question that we have is, in a customer's training plan, technical training, oh, in their technical training part of their training plan. Can we add more choices for certificates? I had someone 
receive their AWS certificate, or should I just choose other? So let's go to customers. And we'll, oh, well, let's see if we can find one with a training plan. And so under technical, Oh, this one doesn't have anything added into it. So, Jim, do you want to – I know that we had added all of the traditional certificates in to um, Illinois WorkNet, but uh, I, I'm assuming that Scott is not seeing the AWS certificate in that listing. So I'm, I will make a note to ask to have that one added specifically. All right, um, I will talk to the programmers about making sure that that is in IW, uh, the, um, I'm sorry, in the Atom system. All right. All right, I'm typing myself a note, sorry. All right, are there any other questions about, um, the enrolled customers that we have on here. And we've got a question, or we've got something being typed here. So now on... Um, Indeed, this is please. Jim for a second. To go back to that previous question, just so I make sure I have the question exactly right in my mind, what Scott was asking about, could you open it up so I can share my screen? Um, so I can display the different credential choices. All right, I will stop sharing mine, and then all you have to do is click on share my screen. Okay, got it. All right, does everybody see my screen now? You can raise your hand if you'd like to. All right, we're good. All right, so these right here, um, this is in the training database of IWDS. So these are all the credentials that are possible to be loaded in on a, on a client. So which one specifically um, would need from uh, Scott to say that he would want if it's not on here? Uh, that way we can make sure we're all on the same page. There's three AWS uh, certificates, Scott. So. Oh, okay, so from what I'm reading here, um, Jim, Scott is saying he was speaking about I, Illinois WorkNet where I was, not IWDS, but to add the training certificate so that it shows up in Illinois WorkNet, you have to add the, the fact that the person is taking the credential in through IWDS. Is and that then you have, to mark, you have to mark the credential received, and they would have to update it just at this screen right here. Like if I had uh, Amy Adams say she was in the AWDS, and let's just say it was through uh, ICE, Illinois Central College, and whatever my source was, the copy of the, their, their credential, um, date attained, 510. 2014, and then description uh, credential for gas metal arc welding. That's the only way it's ever going to get credit for it is by the case manager loading in the specific credential received. Um, so, so then once it, it's loaded into IWDS, it will automatically appear in Illinois WorkNet. I would rely on you guys to, clear, to answer that, but yes. That's I, will, I will make sure that that's what happens. I, yeah, will, I will forward this off to, or Lacey can take a note and forward that off to the programmers. But there's no possible way they're going to be loading a credential through WorkNet. It's all going to be based on the credentials they're loading through IWDS. Right. 
and that's, and that's credential attainment, so that needs to be an IWDS no matter what. If they're wanting to get credit for their credential, correct. Right, right. All right. Okay, so does that answer your question, um, Scott? And that should also answer David's question as well, because if the welding was not in the drop-down list, then it was because the credential was not added on the on the IWDS. We, got, we need to make sure we're speaking, because David's asking, on that technical training page you were just on, so is he speaking about IWDS or WorkNet? What are you speaking of, David? Because I wasn't on a technical training page. I was on the credential page. Okay, WorkNet. Work net. All right, so let me go back to share my screen. There. And let's find somebody here with a plan. We'll try Eric this time. And we'll go to training and employment plan, which is where we are. And we're doing technical training. And courses, certi certifications, and credentials, we can select. All right, so they are not listed here, which is what you're just seeing. So we, I will make sure that we have some of these uh, uh, additional items added um, so that all of the certificates that they can receive credentials for are also listed in here under the training plan. All right, so let me make a note here. I'm going to type a moment. And um, we'll see if that's possible to do that. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, any? Let's see what we have here. Um, Work-based learning, jobs forecasting, and, and posting. If you had a question about those particular areas, let's um, take a look at those questions. If you want to type those into the chat pod. All right, I don't see anybody typing, and they've unchecked the box. Okay, so let's look at, at um, do, who has the question about outreach, if you want to type that in there, about torque. Okay, do, uh, Connie Smith is concerned about torque not being done in all places. Can someone speak to this issue? Will this be a monitoring issue? Um, Jim, I can't answer that question. It's that out of my realm also. That would be a, a Mike Baker uh, question. Uh, so I would table that for Mike and then get back uh, to. We'll get, we'll get an answer. We'll get an answer to you, David, as soon as we can um, get back. I will send Mike an email as soon as we're done. Um, OK, then do we have any? Uh, what was the outreach question that someone had? And then while we're waiting on that, can we also get the question, uh, the other one down at the bottom, if we have not already answered that? Oh, 
Oh, okay. All right. So the other question was torque. All right. So then do we still have a question about outreach? Yes, Sally, we will let everybody know about the torque response. We'll, um, either cover it in our next te technical assistance. Well, in fact, we will cover it in the next technical assistance. And in the interim, we'll send out an email to everybody, or else it will be covered in the Friday call. All right. And I'm not seeing anybody typing about outreach. A Facebook page for Adam? Is that what you're talking about? I think that meant yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that when the fingers don't work right, don't you? Does anybody, if you want to raise your hand and say if you have a Facebook page for um, Adam, that would be great. Let us know. I don't see any hands going up. Now, the the one thing about, um, let, let me tell you a little bit about Facebook. The reach factor of Facebook used to be at probably a, 16% view, where if somebody was a fan of your page, they used, there used to be about 16% of the people that would see the post. That algorithm has now changed, and the view of Facebook pages is now down to about 16, uh, about 6% from 16% over the past two years. What happens with Facebook is that unless your fans interact, like, share, do whatever with your posts, they will not be seeing those posts. So if you're going to share something on Facebook, you need to make sure that you're doing it on a regular basis and trying to get some interaction going with it. So using a general Facebook page for your organization is probably a little bit more um, realistic than trying to do a special page for, for Adam. Now, if you want to create a Facebook group for all of your Adam clients, that might be a little bit uh, more interactive with that group. So consider creating a Facebook group and invite all of your people that are the clients to the group so that you can communicate with them a little bit uh, more casually. And Dean, this is, this is Dave Gallagher. I, um, we've tried to encourage the local projects also to, um, to reach out to as many local partners as they can to, um, to sort of build a web of Facebook pages that are updating with ad information so oh, that if they have, um, you know, some information they want to get out about a, job fair or something, what, what have you, um, if they can enlist as many of those local partners as possible, they can sort of increase their touches. Yes, that's very true. Share, share alike, share other people's posts so that the information gets out to as many people as possible. You may even want to share that information onto your personal friends um, just because you never know who might need that job fair information especially. Yeah, the thing to think about is, is the network part of it, that you want to expand that as much as possible and in, many ways, as, in as many ways as possible. Right. Right. But it's All not right. a one-to-one -one thing. You put it up on a Facebook and that person looks at it. You want to spread it out far and wide. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, we, um, I don't see anybody else typing any additional questions. So, and I do notice that a couple of people are leaving for some 1030 appointments. So uh, we will be ending our call today, and we will address the question that we need to get an answer from Mike on. And we will be seeing you in two weeks on our next technical assistance call. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jim.